Hi everybody, um, this is a presentation on Maladi Suryodharma. Um, I'm Alora Jackson, but for this presentation, because she is a performing artist, I decided to use my character, Sion, um, as I am also a fellow performing artist. I am a drag king, um, recreationally, but, um, this made me feel like I was going to be more in tune with her and her style um it just gave me a deeper connection to the artist so getting straight into it Maladi Sarada Aramo was born in if I can get it to listen to me next slide go to the next slide not that far <laughs> oops so she was born in Surakarta Indonesia um which is where she spent most of her life. Uh, she went to uh, college in, if you can see Beng Bengal, um, where that little lip is. Um, and she got her first degree in international relations, actually, which also connected her to me personally, as I am a global international student. Uh, she didn't actually start her art career, uh, or her career as an artist until she moved to Germany. Um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name. Ron Schweig? I'm really not sure. Uh, but here she met one of her teachers, um, who really got her into the whole situation. Beforehand, she'd kind of dabbled in photography, but it was more of a simple kind of thing where she just took pictures here and there um nothing too serious uh while she was in germany she'd actually moved there with her husband and she was trying to find programs she was going to continue her studies but she couldn't find anything that she actually really enjoyed um or that she was too intrigued by so instead she kind of was sitting in the background and, and art just kind of came to her um but right now she lives in Hava Indonesia um that's where she spends most of her time that's where you know a lot of her life is now um and then off to the side of the screen you see these listed places and everything those are all places that she's actually performed at um South Korea I just put because she's performed like everywhere that is anywhere in South Korea, so I could have just filled up this entire screen with places that she's been in South Korea, um, but instead I just put it as an overarching, uh, but I felt that this was important to show, like, the broad, uh, thought process of where she's been and how far, and, you know, how distant she's been, like, you know, anywhere from Italy to Japan, and, you know, Oh, Malaysia, and these are just some of the places that she's been. This isn't even a full list. You know, I, it would take, like, three slides to go over how, how many different places and how many different performances she's done. Um, but she actually accredits herself to not being, like, a natural made artist. Like, she feels like she's not the usual kind of artist, um it's kind of weird how she got into it she actually was sitting inside of a botanical gardens uh at hbk i i can't say the the actual name of the school uh it, it is very german and i'm very not <laughs> so she actually sat down next to uh a famous budo dancer uh called enzu furukawa she had no idea who she was. She was just a very petite Japanese woman, very kind, um, and they struck up a conversation where she found this out um, about Anzu and how, you know, how she had a, Anzu had a class at the local college, um, you know, at the local performing college that intrigued Malati. Um, so she really got, uh, Anzu really got, got Melanian into, uh, Melati into performing arts and all of that, like, the dancing aspect, um, and that's where she draws a lot of inspiration from, 
Um, and yes, I'm going to call them by their first names just to make it simpler. Um, you know, that way I'm not tripping over their names every single time. You know, a lot of these name, a lot of these last names are a little difficult to say. Uh, so just for the sake of it. Um, but moving on to the Rindu. Oh, uh, Rindu was actually her first ever performance. Um, there are no known pictures of it because it was such a small thing. The only real information we have is what Melody has told her, told us herself. Um, it was, according to her, held in, like, the underground Berlin, and like, underground, and it was, uh, held in an underground cellar and everything, um, that had been abandoned. She only remembers, like, five, six people being there for her first performance, um, and she called it Rindu as, um, a way of, like, her, her, the feeling behind it was supposed to be, you know, her loneliness and her sadness of being a foreigner and this law, like, feeling lost in Germany as a foreigner. Uh, and it makes sense being in the late 90s and everything and not having as much connection um, as easily available. Like, you know, we have the internet now, so just imagine how hard it was for her to have a phone call with her parents or something like that, you know. Uh, those things... You know, video recordings and video chats like this weren't really a thing back then, so you can only imagine how lonely she was. Um, and so that the performance was apparently her throwing herself down onto the cellar floor and slamming her hands against the cement over and over again to show and represent that frustration and that loneliness that she must have felt. Um, so I did choose to put why let the chicken run here um an homage to Anam and and Dieta. uh of course this happened you know 2001 to five years later uh not at all really the same kind of feeling but it gave the same aesthetic uh this underground area as Rindu so I thought that those two paralleled well with the setting and everything um and I felt that was kind of important uh, especially due to the fact that there are no pictures of Rindu again, Rindu again, so, uh, that's kind of all I really had to go off of is her words, and I wanted to have something to help kind of imagine that scene, even though I didn't have any actual media evidence for it, um, but she says that that, it wasn't the amount of people that saw her there, it wasn't any of that, it was her willingness to go up on stage, stage or in the cellar and everything and actually perform and that was what was important about this piece to her and why it's still one of the most important pieces because of course it's her first piece but you know it's the piece that showed her that she was able to do this and it's the piece that kind of changed her life she'll say um Anzu was actually a faculty member at HBK and was her teacher for a while, but after her faculty, uh, her session there, her contract with them, ended, uh, Marina Abramovic, uh, Ab she'll say it in a video later that I have, but in the meantime, butchering this, Abramovic, uh, Marina took over her, uh, over Anzu's place as a professor there, and so she would become one of her students and actually eventually her assistant and she uh words just left my head sorry um and actually the first time that she uh Milady met marina was she had no idea who she was she simply wanted to continue her teachings that she kept with anzu um and marina asked everybody why they were there because there was 80 students but she only would allow 20 people to stay. And at first, Melody would it replied with something pretty common of, well, I want to pick up where my last teacher left off. I want to learn more. Marina was like, meh, no, try again. And so Melody kind of thought about it for a second and said, you are very beautiful, and I feel like I can trust you. It was a very silly answer, Melody will say herself, but 
it actually endeared her to Marina. It made her Marina laugh, and so it did get her a spot in that. Um, and Marina would change her life. She would be one of the biggest influences. Uh, if you're not aware, which I wasn't personally, Marina is a uh, also a performing artist, but she's much more solo durational. And you can see how that shapes Milani's work as a student. Um, you know, she, she was durational and everything. Uh, and taught Milani how to, excuse me, uh, taught Milani how to use her body and everything as, as a vessel, um, and how to, like, be serious about that with Milani, um, with Marina, uh, Milani and her fellow classmates actually got to perform at the 50th annual, uh, Benelli in Venice, uh, as a live exhibit for the first day and everything, and they performed for several hours, so long that Marina's uh, husband at the time would go around and, like, spray them with water so oh, that they wouldn't get too hot. Um, the, this is a picture from one of the most famous dances and famous pieces that um, Melody has ever done. Uh, is Exagere Butter Dance. Um, it was originally done in 2000, but there have been hundreds of renditions that she's done throughout time. Um, but moving on, you know, there, there's this question of, are you really an artist, and is it really art without, you know, a medium? What is a, what is your medium and everything? And so sometimes she'll be asked this question, and her body, her soul is her medium. Um, going into it, you know, I'll, I'll show you this video, and I might do a little bit of commentary or, or talk. Kalau saya per, membuat karya performance saya nggak butuh apa-apa. Saya hanya butuh tubuh saya pun bisa. Tentunya kalau di sekolah di Jerman juga harus dibekali dengan bacaan yang banyak. Dan sekaligus saya mendalami buku-buku filsafat dan segala macam. Yang paling penting adalah hubungan antara pelakunya dengan hubungannya dengan manusia lain. It's all about human. Kebetulan pada waktu itu Ancu Furukawa selesai uh, tugasnya sebagai profesor. Uh, dan Marina Abramovic datang ke sekolah itu menggantikannya. Saya kurang tahu waktu itu siapa itu Marina Abramovic ya. <laughs> Wah itu kelas pertama tahun 97. Dan sejak itu saya pikir semakin saya tahu bahwa performance art itu juga tidak hanya uh, apa namanya membutuhkan tubuh sebagai media aja, tapi tubuh sebagai conceptual body. Tubuh itu tidak hanya mewakili konsep, tapi dia adalah sebuah kesatuan antar tindakannya sebagai uh, tindakan life-nya, tindakan, tindakan yang natural, tindakan yang alami, yang manusiawi. Tapi di balik itu ada sebuah perjalanan untuk memutuskan bahwa ini saya lakukan karena saya ada niat, ada pikiran, ada wawasan. Jadi bukan sekedar show. Sementara di performance art itu, Kelemahan kita adalah juga ke kekuatan kita gitu. Kelemahan kita itu manusiawi dan dari situ energi itu tumbuh. Saya pikir mengkomunikasikan konsep atau pikiran yang melatar belakangi sebuah karya performance itu terwakili hanya ketika dia disaksikan secara live. Menurut saya karya yang menarik itu karya yang nampaknya belum selesai. Jadi eksekusi yang terakhir sebuah karya itu tidak hanya berhenti se seperti sebuah desain. Menurut saya karya seni rupa itu atau terutama di bidang saya itu performance itu kalau performance tidak berhasil mengajak, tidak bisa berhasil menggugah perspektif atau pintu-pintu persepsi penontonnya itu belum belum terjangkau. 
public. I just want to stop here because I think that this is actually a beautiful picture of her. Um, and this work was one of my favorites going through, not only but going through her actual page and looking at her works. So it really is just a simplistic, very powerful piece to me. Performance itu mereka selalu membawa kejutan ya. Dan di resiko, resiko karya itu selalu ada di situ ya. Ketika kita wah, berkarya seperti ini dan supaya message kita atau pikiran kita tersampaikan, tapi publik tidak akan pernah kita bisa duga pikiran mereka. Kita tidak bisa tidak bisa mengkontrol apa yang diserap oleh pencernaan visual mereka, feeling mereka dan segala macam. Saya selalu mencoba untuk urut gitu ya mengembangkan metode menemukan lagi apa sih long durational itu bagi apa yang yang bisa hadir di situ apa yang bisa saya dapatkan apa yang bisa saya berikan bagaimana um, sejuta kata <laughs> dari sebuah konsep bisa terreduksi menjadi satu kata tapi itu kan belum selesai gitu karena hubungan saya dengan publik itulah yang kemudian aktif dan terus itu saya riset 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 saya pikir Keinginan saya, keingin tawan saya itu yang membuat saya terus continue ya. Yeah, so that was a very powerful piece to me um, that I felt the need to share with y'all. Um, it is a real art form. It, it really is, you know, there should be no question of whether it is art or not, because it is. Um, and it's it's beautiful and lovely um, to just watch, and it's very powerful. Uh, I've never had the chance to be with her, you know, watch this in person or anything, obviously. But it's very powerful to see somebody reacting and see somebody doing this in front of you, something so wild or, you know, so solemn. Um, at times, yeah. So, she doesn't use much other than just her body. That is one of her, you know, it, it'll change from time to time. I mean, like I said, there is the butter dance that she's well known for, but that she hasn't really done anything else with butter other than this singular thing. You know, there's performances where she's laid under mattresses, but, you know, that's only happened once or twice, you know. Um, there's so many things that she'll use, in, you know, as well as her body, but her common, you know, way of art is to use her body as the expressive tool. Um, you know, a few more, these will be a lot quicker, um, videos though, but because she is, is this kind of artist, it's just easier to show you, um, you know, pictures only say compared to the performance. But this is one of my favorite pieces actually and you'll you'll kind of recognize some of the setup from the first slide. The long duration um, aspect of my work last work uh, 12 hours is for the examination of endurance. It has a quality of the natural, physical, as well as psychological uh, process. Within that time, so many um, possibilities to enter different kinds of perceptions into the work. So the life aspect of the performance art, where the artwork itself happens in this, at that time, in that space, is very important just to give the, the whole atmosphere, the whole space, and the sense of the human energy can be transferred directly to the visitor. So she actually this piece. Um, uh, I believe it was the best artist um, by the 
Jack Carta or, or something. Um, and it, it again is just one of my favorite pieces and a very piece to me. In her class in 1997 in Braunschweig. But we'll go on and you know, show you guys a bit of these pieces. This is from um, I Love You. You know, the original I Love You as she has done more installments since then. Um, but this is kind of not the original I Love You thing, but a rendition of. It's a very long time. It's 12 hours. This was about 30 minute performance, if I remember correctly. just kind of like that uh, motion and everything of like the turning around and how slow that she was actually doing it um you know, that one said the duration again this was like a 20 30 minute performance uh, you know the the actual video is only about eight minutes long but i'm not going to show you the actual video obviously um or at least not the the full video i guess i should say but, uh, it's, it was supposed to be already there, but apparently it reset itself, you know? Sometimes YouTube did that, sometimes it no. piece is actually uh, not the right one uh perception of pattern and timeless influences uh it originally was out in 2007 the same with i love you um they originally debuted but both of i believe this video was actually from around that time period it was either 2000 2008 or 2007 2008 um the video for my love you it was taken back in uh 2015 though so that was a more recent video of that rendition um but like how does the world react to her and actually there's kind of a funny story with her but first we'll talk about actual serious artists and how other critics see her um like i said earlier she was awarded best artist by um the art stage ja jakarta um, in 2017, um, and she has been just recently a speaker at Asia Society event in New York, um, as of 2019. She's had, she was scheduled to have several works in New York and in, um, several different uh, museums and art galleries, actually this month, but obviously with all of this going on. I doubt any of that. those will actually be going through. Um, she also won the uh, Juros Prize Award of 2014. Uh, and I believe that that one was actually the one that she won for I'm a Ghost in My Own Home. Or in my own house. Uh, uh, this, the Transaction of Hollows, is the one that she got Best Artist for, I believe. Um, and it's... Her standing in a room, fully white, with arrows, fully white, with a bow, fully white, 
and just launching them into the walls. Um, but I said there was a little bit of a funny reaction. Um, she actually became slightly famous due to viral videos. Somebody took her original butter dance, um, exagere butter dance, and overlaid Adele on top of it, and it became one of those viral videos, super famous. So, a lot of people don't actually know who she is, but if you were in on the internet and with, you know, looking at those viral videos, oh, it was a couple of years ago, she might have come past your screen and you might have actually seen one of her works. Um, and I found that really interesting. I, while I was looking for, like, how people react to her, I found an, an article by Huffington Post about it. Um, but... Moving on to the evolution of Melody. Uh, there's been a slight evolution, I would say, yes. But for the most part, she's kind of kept to her ways. Um, this is a picture of Bubble Jam. I actually couldn't find a video of the uh, actual performance. Um, I got this photo off of her website, though. Um, and, you know, you can see it's her and, you know... Her and another person like just fighting and being very physical with their bodies and I would say that's the thing that's changed the most in her works not saying that the woman will not still push herself she is a beast she will still do the butter dance and she's in her 50s you know she's still out there doing and pushing herself but I would definitely say that a lot of her work has become less physically taxing um, you know, in the beginning, she would push and basically try and destroy her body on stage or in performances over and over and over again to, you know, get that raw meaning across to you. Um, and instead, now she's a little bit more, you know, the bow and arrow, the this is I love you three on the other side, um, you know, definitely things that are taxing on the body, but less physically straining and less physically demanding of her. So she she's kind of taken a step back and, you know, given her body some rest. And I think that, you know, that's the main evolution. She has started to dabble a little bit more with, you know, paintings and sketching and everything, but nothing that she's very famous for. Um, her main medium and all of that still is her body and is to tell her story through her body. Um, that, so she does have some, uh, things to auction and everything, you know, most of the time she'll just, they'll be in galleries and stuff, but like I said, she's kind of been experimenting with, you know, charcoal, and making her own paper. So she'll make handmade paper and everything. Um, and so she's become a little bit more common for that. You know, a little bit more, at least, you know, in the art gallery world, those have been going on sale more and more frequently. Um, but personally, my opinion on it is that she's very lovely Sometimes the image, the messages will go over my head, but she, it is clear her passion and her drive, and I think with a performing artist, that's one of the most important things to be aware of, is, like, how passionate and how, how much drive she has, um, and that's definitely important and to me, and one of the reasons why I actually like her. Um, the other side is The Promise of from 2002, um, and this was a very impactful, uh, image to me, you know, how in-depth you can see her get into this performance, and the look and the emotion in her face, uh, and everything, so, but that's kind of the end, uh, these are the resources, and I will make sure that the PowerPoint is available uh, so that, you know, you can go and skim through these resources and be able to see. Uh, but, yeah, thanks.
for tuning in. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, and I guess that's all.